How do you know it's time for back surgery? My name is Dr. Eric Broadworth. I am a physical therapist and orthopedic clinical specialist in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I work with a lot of active adults and athletes, and I want to tell you my story. And you're probably wondering why I'm positioned like this. I'm, I'm on the ground right now because this is the only position that really gives me lasting comfort, really, that I can get too comfortable in. I really can't sit or tolerate standing for any length of time. It's been pretty rough. So let me tell you a little bit about my story and what I've got going on, and maybe this might be able to help you. So I'm dealing with a herniated disc in my back that is pinching on the uh, L5 nerve root and causing sciatica symptoms down the leg. And what started off initially as feeling like someone was stabbing me in my SI joint has progressed to having numbness and tingling, and I apologize for my dogs, numbness, tingling, and weakness into my right leg. So, you know, lifting my big toe is tough. Uh, I've been limping around. Sitting's been awful. Standing's been pretty brutal. Walking isn't all that great anymore, and I've been limping. And you're probably wondering, well, how does, you know, how does this happen? And it can be a number of ways. There was no one specific incident for me. I've had some on and off back issues since I was about 18. And normally, though, I tweak my back two weeks later, I'm good to go. Um, this has been going on for months now. And it started, currently it's May. So in December, I had an umbilical hernia repair. So that's uh, kind of a tear in the fascia right above the belly button. And the day before that surgery, I went to do a small workout, wasn't doing any lifting, and my back just got tighter and tighter. All I was doing was rowing some box jumps and some sit-ups and modified it halfway through and it just continued to stay that way and get worse. Uh, so I went in that surgery not fully, you know, 100%. And then, um, let's see, came out of the surgery and was limited with lifting. And, and so by the time it was appropriate for me to start lifting again and squatting, doing any squatting or even getting on the rower, I was having those same symptoms as before. Um, I tried to push my body too much. I really, uh, I could have done a better job at listening to my body, you know, and, and taking my own advice. I, I didn't do that. I kind of thought, so a lot of times with back pain, the discs in the back like to be loaded. It is a good thing to lift and carry and do all those things. That's part of the rehabilitation process. However, I admittedly, you know, probably pushed it a little too much and didn't allow for enough recovery and those things that I try to teach people every day about. So shame on me. But I knew I was in trouble when I started to get the numbness and tingling down the leg. Numbness, tingling, some weakness stuff. So since that started happening, I have not been lifting. Uh, I cut a lot of my activities. I stuck, in, stuck to mostly physical therapy and rehab-based exercises and really limited everything to try and keep it pain-free and allow for healing. Um, most of these issues when it comes to herniated discs too, if you are watching this, you know, your back is strong. The, the back and spine is very strong structure. You look, you got power lifters who can lift a thousand pounds. That's not everyone. I don't recommend everyone just go pick up a thousand pounds, but point being is our backs are very strong. And 90% of herniated discs heal just fine without any surgery. Most times, within two weeks, no matter what you do, it's going to get better. So whether you decide to do a massage or PT or Cairo or whatever, um, it should get better within two weeks. And obviously, I am I'm well past that. So I went the conservative route. I have seen multiple physical therapists uh, who I'm very grateful that they've seen. I, I've seen my own team at Fuel Health and Wellness, where I'm the, I'm the owner. I've had them. They're, they're always my first go-to. And then I went to other people who are trained in specialties that we don't necessarily have uh, with my clinicians, um, just to get also another set of eyes on it and see, you know, 
what is everything I can do conservatively to avoid surgery. So I've probably seen five or six different physical therapists, all who have been, you know, extremely knowledgeable, very helpful. The, I get some results, but the results were short lasting and it's still just continued to get worse. So that's where I then went in and got an MRI. So if you're thinking, should I get an MRI if I have a herniated disc? That should not be the first step. Go see, do conservative care because most likely it's going to get better. But if it's not, then an MRI may be warranted, such as in my case. So I went, got an MRI, showed the bulging disc at L5, pinching on that nerve root, which is exactly what I expected given my symptoms and where everything was with, you know, the weakness into the toe and the foot and where my numbness was and everything like that. So no surprise to me. Um, I then went and got a, an injection. Um, normally injections, you know, if you get that, should last at least a month to three months. Mine lasted three days. <laughs> um, so that wasn't great that it only lasted so long. And so now essentially I am looking at a uh, microdiscectomy. So what they're going to do is they're going to uh, make a small incision in my back, go in, trim out the part of the disc that is impinging on the nerve root, clean out that area, sew me back up. Um, then it's on to recovery, uh, which can typically be about three months by the time you're back to all your normal activities. Um, and when it comes to any kind of surgery, though, honestly, it can be longer than that. I mean, you're not get, you'll feel pretty good about three months, but you're probably not going to be 100%. Um, but where I'm at right now, and for those of you who have tried conservative measures, you know, I can't hardly sit or, or stand for getting up in the morning and taking a shower, for example, <laughs> is absolutely awful. You go and get in the shower and within less than two minutes, I'm getting the numbness into my foot, pain down the leg, um, take a shower quick, hobble out, go lay on the bed to try and get some <laughs> relief. Um, I have been avoiding restaurants because I can't hardly sit. So my wife and I, we, we love going out to eat, but we've been doing takeout just because if I need to lay down, I can easily do that. We went to, we had a wedding yesterday. Um, and you get to a point where you don't care about looking silly. All you want is relief. And I apologize for my dog. I, I have nowhere to escape because I'm just laying on the floor right now. But um, you get to a point where you just don't care and all you want is relief. And, and you don't care how silly you, you look. I have laid down in airports on my back or on my stomach. Most recently it was a wedding, found like kind of a... What, I was hoping it was an empty room, but people walk by, they're like, are you okay? They think, you know, I'm just, um, <laughs> they probably think I'm just some drunk guy that's passed out in there. I'm like, no, I'm good. It's just my back. I'm just, I'm just taking a break. Um, and let's see, I've laid down in the middle of a coffee shop. So point being, if you get to these points where it's affecting you every single day and you've tried everything else, then yes, it may be appropriate to look into other medical management. So whether that is injections or surgery. Um, but again, most of these do get better with time. So I do want to provide you with some hope. Talk to more than one person just before you go into the knife. Um, get multiple people's opinions and, and give other things a try. However, if you are getting the numbness and the weakness in the leg, that is a serious issue and you do need to be timely about that because the longer that lasts, it's going to take longer for that nerve to heal um, once you get the compression off it. And sometimes that can, you know, can be permanent. So you just, you need to take all of that into consideration before going under the knife. Um, that's my story on being a physical therapist and dealing with my own back pain and kind of where I'm at right now. I'm very hopeful this type of surgery that I'm undergoing, which is not a fusion again, it's just, just uh, taking out part of the disc, which is it has it does have its risks. However, it's got an 80 to 90% success rate. So very hopeful I'm going to be back uh, to 100%, living an active pain-free life. Um, but right now this is where I'm at. So if you have any questions, please put in the comments below. 
Thanks for listening to my story, and I will fill you in as more uh, comes through.